Hello everybody and welcome to a new update on this channel. Today I'm going to build a modification of the detective's office. So what you see here on the right, my detective's office mark. I started building that because I really like the original one, but I couldn't afford it at that time. The price for this detective's office is insane by now. So I got this one, you can see it is about 90% complete, especially there on the upper floor, there are some parts missing. So I got it cheaper, uh, even cheaper than the original price, at least uh, no minifigs included, but that's not too bad. So I'm going to combine those two buildings to a greater detective's office building. So what I'm essentially going to do is I'm going to take the detective's office section of my mock and put it on top of the original one so that the detective's office building overall has about the same height and not a difference in floors. I thought about adding uh, another floor on the blue side as well so that we would have three floors on the right side and two floors on the left side, but that was just way too tall in the city. So I think two floors on top of the ground floor is totally enough. Uh, Elle's barbershop is going to stay, but it's going to be extended. And together with that, we're going to elongate the floors above Elle's barbershop uh, in depth so that we can have some small one bedroom apartments. The bar which I have created in my mock is not going to go totally because I'm going to combine my bar with the pool hall there so that we're going to have a bar with a pool table inside. So I'm very excited about this project. I've ordered a lot of pieces to accomplish that. So I'm going to start building and then I'm going to get back to you. Now, as you can see, I have elongated the blue part of the building and technically I'm finished with the exterior now, but I still have some of those masonry bricks left. So I'm going to elongate the detective's office section on the right by a few studs, by two studs probably. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to get back to you. The exterior is now finished and as you can see, this looks a lot better. I mean, it's just two studs, but I think it looks a lot better than before. So now we're going to have a look at this building floor by floor. So looking at the front of my detective's office, you can see that just the tree in the center here is different from the original one. And, and moving on to the side, we can see that that already looks a lot different because it has a lot more depth than the original building. Here on the back, I have kept those three white windows up there and the hidden entrance for the cookie barrels there. Now, as you can see, the back of the pool hall has changed as well. We now have two of those one by four by three windows and we have the fire escape coming down from this sort of balcony I have created up here with those little fence pieces. And yeah, then off to the side, you can see that the pool hall has been elongated to the back quite a bit. So we are here at the edge, at the end of the base plate already. Apart from that, just a tan wall here. So now let's have a look at what's going on inside. First up, we have Elle's barbershop. And now just let me remove the staircase real quick. As you can see, we now have two chairs inside of here. We have two mirrors and we still have the possibility to smuggle cookies, donuts and other sweets through Elle's Barbershop. We can also open this section right there in order to smuggle the sweets through that section there. So the play function still exists. And then here in the back, I've also added a small cash register. And that just closes like that. Pretty simple. So that is Elle's Barbershop. Let's head on to the pool hall. And as you can see, the pool hall isn't just a pool hall. It's now a bar with a pool table with a piano here in the corner. So this entire area is new to this place. I have kept the play function here, the play feature, because I think that is very, very cool. So that still works. And I have included some bottles here. And yeah, so that is a very, very nice bar and 
So that is the Highlander bar with pool table. Now let's move on to the next floor. The upper floor includes the small toilet with sink, which was there before, and also this very small one bedroom apartment with the bed with a sink and an oven. And uh, we can close it up. We have something inside of there. Nothing spectacular. Let's put it back in. And of course we have the door to the apartment. Let me close that oven. Uh, we have the door here, which opens up like that. And that really is the small one bedroom apartment. Moving on, we have the hallway and now we have the former detective's office, which is currently occupied by the CMF painter. You can see that he is painting uh, the painting which was included in the museum heist from 2013. We still have a wanted poster on the wall and this feature, this play feature on the wall. I've kept it for now because I am not sure how to use this office space because I think it's too large for just this painter alone. And there is more space to it than just having a painter here. So I was thinking about a lawyer's office or maybe a therapist's office, something like that. But if you have an idea what could be located in this office, write a comment down below and I'll check it out. And that's it for the first upper floor. Let's have a look at the next floor. And this floor is with no doubt the one that has been changed the most. So the area where we had the kitchen before has now a bathroom as well, because I mean, if we're having an apartment on this floor too, there has to be a bathroom on this floor as well. I mean, uh, bathrooms are very, very rare in Lego buildings, but if we have one, we can have two. Why not? And then moving on, we have the second one bedroom apartment. And as you can see, that is built in almost the same way. So we have one bed, one sink, and we have an oven and that's it for this small one bedroom apartment. Now moving down the hallway, we can get a beautiful view at the door to Ace Brickman's office. And that brick bolt door is, that is the place where I have included the second window with Ace Brickman private detective written on it, which I had bought for my detective's office mock. And of course it opens up to the inside like that. So that is fully functional. And as you can see, Ace Brickman's office is pretty crowded, but it still has some space. So of course we have the visitor's chair, we have Ace Brickman's chair, we have his desk with a $100 bill, with a typewriter, with a old rotary phone, with his lamp, his newspapers, uh, we have a wanted paper here on the wall. We have the secret hidden compartment where you can hide evidence or letters or something that is important. Uh, back here we have the most important item of a detective, the magnifying glass. Uh, then here he has a camera stored safely. And then he has his hat stand next to the door. On the other side of the office, we can see the filing cabinet with various things. So there he has a pocket watch. What else? Nothing. Um, a pistol, even two. And some money. And on top, just a fan. And in the corner there, he has some bottles. Last but not least, here's a look at the roof. As you can see, an improved version of the water tower is still on the roof. The skylight is still there. So nothing special. So that's it for the roof. And that consists of two parts. So this one can be lifted up individually and the other part as well. So that is that. Let's put this new modified best version of the detective's office ever into the city and then we're going to have a final look at it. So that's how the new detective's office looks located in the city. 
Thank you very much for watching. Now, before this video ends, I'm going to show you some pictures of this mark with minifigs. So stay tuned for that. Have a good day, have a great time, and I see you in the next video. Bye.